Hello everyone, I'm Certified Natural Healthcare Practitioner Erin Thole, and today we are just talking to little old me this Friday. Um, I was given an idea by a client of mine. She said, why don't you do a video on the benefits of doing the oat panel and the comprehensive stool analysis together, like talk about why you do those two panels together, oftentimes why you recommend them. And I thought that was a great idea because those are two panels that um, are really functional. Like they tell us a lot about a person's ecosystem and what's going on in the body. And it really helps us get to the root cause. So today that is what we are talking about. So those test kits are, or those tests are done through a lab called Mosaic. Um, used to be called Great Plains Laboratory recently, within the last year, has switched the name and did, you know, rebranding and stuff like that. So this is a stool test. This is the oat panel. If you have a little one who's wearing a diaper, you can always put in one of these little guys into the urine or into their diaper to catch urine and then you know, put it into the test kit. So it's very versatile for, for people of all ages. And oftentimes we do want to do them on children. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit today as well. Um, but the reason that I often do these panels and these panels are so, so popular and give us just an enormous amount of information on what's going on in a person's body. Um, when a client comes to me, a potential client comes to me, we're doing our consultation. Oftentimes I'll recommend these panels if they have a lot of random things that are kind of like coming together and it seems like they're having flare ups and then it goes dormant. They have flare ups and then it goes dormant. Um, they have an autoimmune condition or they have like a handful of a lot of different issues going on. Like it might be, I have a lot of seasonal allergies and I have fatigue and I can't sleep at night. And my thyroid is crazy. And my digestion's all messed up and I get bloated constantly. Um, and I have mood swings and my cycle is off, you know, I'm like, Whoa, that's a lot of stuff, you know? So we would more than likely do this kind of combination or for kids where they have a lot of digestive issues. They have they're on the spectrum somewhere, um, you know, something like that. We we would definitely, definitely want to do an oat and a stool panel. Um, so the oat is a urine test. It stands for organic acids test. It tests over 70 different metabolic markers. So it's going to be looking for systemic infections that are yeast, mold, candida, fungal, you know, base. Um, it'll also look for systemic bacterial infections which is super important. It'll look for a lot of those super bugs like C. diff and things in that category. It also looks for something called oxalates. Um, oxalates are crystallizations that form in the soft tissues, your connective tissues, joints. They can form in the muscles as well. Um, they form in the gallbladders, gallstones, the kidneys as kidney stones. They can also form in your thyroid as nodules and things of that nature. So these are things that um, some people are genetically predisposed to just acquiring more oxalates and you can do like a low oxalate diet to kind of keep them at bay. However, the vast majority of people that have oxalate issues have them because of systemic infections in the body, specifically yeast infections. So the body will allow oxalates to proliferate in an effort to like encase or kind of like protect the body from that infection. But in doing so, the oxalates themselves cause symptoms. They can cause digestive distress. Um, like I said, gallstones, kidney stones. Um, they can also just cause you to feel like achy, sore, stiff, inflamed, puffy, like all the time. Um, so that's obviously something that we don't want. A lot of kids that are on the spectrum have a very high level of oxalates, but because they're children and they don't really know how to articulate that, you know, they're stiff, they're sore, they're achy, they're in pain all the time. Oftentimes it comes out in um, some of the reason for, not all of the reason, but some of the reason for emotional outbursts, the, uh, the, the need for like weighted blankets or to kind of like always be like pressed up against something or cuddling against something or someone, um, you know, like all of the sensory stuff, like the swings and anything that's kind of like wrapping around them, that compression really helps to kind of alleviate that, um, that soreness, that stiffness, that achiness, like from the oxalates. So if your child is, 
is helped by those types of things, they might have an oxalate issue um, and an oat panel will be able to confirm that so that we can, you know, get those out because these kids oftentimes they don't, they don't know any difference. They don't know to tell you like, Hey mom, or sometimes they can't tell you like, Hey mom, I hurt all the time. It's just their normal, you know? Um, so we definitely want to see if there's oxalates on a panel. And then it also lets us know like mitochondrial function, like how are the cells functioning? How's that mitochondria functioning? It lets us know what the neurotransmitters look like, those feel good hormones, um, in our body. And then it also gives us toxicity markers. So we can look at like the ecosystem and be like, Hey, this person's not methylating, meaning they're not their body isn't able to adequately break itself down and rebuild itself in a healthy way. We can see that on the panel. We can see toxic load. We can see whether the ecosystem of the gut is in complete disarray and just like bogged down by toxicity due to bacterial imbalances and things of that nature. So we can see, like I said, over 70 different metabolic markers on that oat panel. Now the stool panel is a two day panel. So you're going to, um, have a sample that you produce one day and then within 24 hours, you know, 24 hours later have hopefully a second sample. Sometimes if people are really constipated, those samples are a little bit further apart. That's okay. But we do want those two samples so that we can see diversity of bacteria and potential pathogenics um, throughout the course of, you know, a few days. We want to be able to get like a broad spectrum. So where the oat is weak, the stool is strong and vice versa. So when I look at an oat panel report, I'm always keeping in mind that it is a, it is a urine test. Okay. So if someone has a lot of congestion and stagnation in their body and they're not able to detox through that what's called phase one detoxification system adequately, which is cellular detoxification, moving the lymph, you know, things like that. Sometimes, you know, you can only see on the panel what you can pee out, you know? So if that phase one is really, really congested, oftentimes the first panel will give us some clues where a lot of things will be borderline high. And then that like toxicity portion of the panel, like a lot of stuff is lit up there. Then I'm like, Hmm, we know that there's a lot of toxicity and ecosystem imbalance. We have five different infections that are borderline high. I'm guessing that they're actually high and that the body can't actually adequately detox those things out through the urine because there's so much congestion within the lymph and within the cells. So on the second test, things might look absolutely atrocious, but someone feels a million times better. And that second test doesn't look awful because they all of a sudden like magically acquired these new infections and things of that nature. What's happening is we're releasing, we're opening up the um, the barricade, if you will, and allowing that phase one detoxification system to do what's intended to do. So we're finally able to like release all the garbage that's been honed up in the cells and in the lymph for, you know, probably years and years and years. And so people feel a million times better, but oftentimes if that phase one is kind of gummed up, that second panel looks awful. Um, but we know that, Hey, now we're flushing all this stuff out. That's been there the whole time. You know, so when I get someone's first oat panel back, you know, I'm kind of reading between the lines sometimes looking at their health history, um, their symptoms that they're coming to me right with right at this moment in time, you know, just like really using my practitioner brain. So all these things are really hot, are borderline high. We have all this toxicity, like the ecosystem's not unhappy. We have all these symptoms. I'm thinking you probably have, you know, X, Y, and Z. I can really make a good hypothesis based on, on that. I've been doing this for 17 years. So um, I've kind of got down to science. And then with the, with the stool panel, you know, let's say the oat is somewhat uneventful. What you're pooping out is what you're pooping out. Like that's what's coming out of the body. So oftentimes we'll be able to see a multitude of infections there. And that's really going to pick up heavy duty infections that the oat panel isn't going to address. So staph infections, strep infection, these are two huge ones that we're starting to see more and more and more of, and they are devastating people's 
bodies, destroying people's ecosystems, spurring on autoimmune um, conditions, especially in kids with like pans, pandas, things of that nature, which means that the, the brain is being attacked. So pandas is um, pediatric neurological, um, or I'm sorry, pediatric autoimmune neuro, um, neurological disorder associated with strep. So that's not like strep throat. That's like a strep infection in your gut. That's just kind of rampant, destroying the system. And it causes um, a lot of mood disorder type behavior um, because the the immune system is has literally created like an autoimmune response and is attacking the nervous system in the brain. And so this has become an extremely huge problem um, in kids, but we also do see it in adults. And strep tends to cause severe constipation. So does staph. So if someone has, and a lot of times you see those two together. You see the staph and the strep infection in the gut together. And we'll see that on the, on the stool panel. Um, there's a lot of other infections that will flag on a stool panel that won't flag on an oat just because of, you know, the difference between urine and stool and like what you're going to see in urine versus what you're going to see in stool. So on the stool test, we're going to be able to see good bacteria, bad bacteria, um, infections of the bacterial, viral, parasitic, um, mold, you know, fungus, candida, yeast variety. Um, the other interesting thing about a stool sample is yeast is really hard to cultivate in a stool sample. It's really easy to see on the oat if it's there. And if that phase one detoxification system is flushing things well, however, sometimes that oat will be really borderline high, like I was saying, but then on the stool panel, we'll see yeast like either in range or, you know, moderately out of range. I've only once, twice seen it like high, like completely like dysfunctional dysbiosis um, with yeast on a stool panel. And that was someone that was very, 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 very sick. Um, the reason that, um, or the reason that that is, is because yeast is really, really hard to cultivate to like get it to like, in that stool sample, like get it to grow in a, in a lab setting in the amount of time that they have to get that sample, you know, tested and, and the results out and stuff like that. So if we even see yeast on that stool panel at all, I know that it's actually a lot higher than what's reflected on, on the lab. So in that way, we kind of get like an answering from the oat to the stool or like a confirmation of like, I think these border lines are actually high. And then I see it on the stool and like, yes, it's definitely high. Um, the stool will also let us know like enzyme levels, GI inflammation markers, um, pH level, the stool. It'll also give us um, based on that individual, like what will and will not work for you in terms of killing things off that shouldn't be there. So it'll, it'll say, you know, like Pidarku, not at all. Um, caprylic acid. Yes. You know, like it'll, it'll give us a gauge for like what will work for an individual and what won't. So that we're not just like shooting in the dark and being like, let's try this. Let's try that. Like, it'll just tell us do this. Um, so that's, that's a really nice thing with that, that panel too. We'll also be able to see like parasites and stuff like that. If, um, they are on there, but oftentimes parasites won't even come up on a panel. Um, like p parasites in the, in the way that people often think of parasites, you know, like little worms and stuff like that, like round worm, hook worm, things like that. Um, because they like to burrow into like the colon lining and into impacted fecal matter and stuff like that. So oftentimes they won't actually come out in a stool panel, but you can have yeast and bacteria that get to a what's considered a parasitic level. So sometimes we'll do parasite cleanses, um, thinking, you know, like these infections have gotten to a parasitic level and we suspect worms for X, Y, and Z reason, you know, even if it's not really showing up on the panel, because oftentimes they, they don't, even if they are there. But if, you know, the pieces of the puzzle are there, the clues are there, that's indicating like, this is a parasite issue, then we would do, you know, some type of parasite cleanse. And there's a multitude of different ones that I use for that, depending on the person um, and what's going on with them and what their body, you know, would do best with. So those two panels, like I said, just go really, really nicely together to just kind of 
where one is strong, the other is weak and vice versa. They really fill in the gaps for each other and they really are confirming of each other for a lot of different things. So everything is really putting together a puzzle um, when we're looking at finding the root cause of someone's health conditions. So I do all these panels to you know, shed light on what's going on in an individual's body so that we're not just like throwing darts in the dark. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's try this. You know, like I want to know like what's going on in your body so we can create that solid game plan to getting you better as quickly as humanly possible. Um, and so that's, you know, why we do all of this. These are at home tests. So the oat and the stool are both at home tests. All of the shipping labels, all that good stuff is already prepaid. There's a UPS envelope in here that once you do the sample um, with the urine, you freeze it. And then there's like a little ice pack that goes in there and you seal it off and, you know, drop it at UPS. It's already prepaid, ready to go. The stool panel, there's a bunch of different little vials in there. Um, and you take different parts of the sample and put them into, it'll explain it like how how to, you know, divvy it up basically into those vials. Some get frozen, some go in the freezer, some stay at room temperature. And then after that second sample is taken, then you just package everything back up into the kit, um, put it again in that, um, that mailing envelope that goes via UPS that's already prepaid and it goes back to the lab. So it's all really super simple, super easy. Um, if these are panels that you think you need, or your children need, or somebody in your life needs, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is all below this video. You can email me at thole.aaron at gmail.com, or you can go to my website. On my website under services, I explain all of these panels again, um, and you can request a free consultation on my website as well. So we can really fine tune a program for you and figure out what tests are adequate for your specific situation. So I hope that this kind of sheds some light on the oat and the stool panel and why I like to do those together. Um, if you have any questions, you have ideas for other videos, let me know. You can either email me or drop those in the comments below. Thank you and happy Friday. Have a great day.